Thanks for tuning in to the time lapse I made of my patio build. I know it's going to be a really long video, but I'd highly suggest just sitting through and watching it. It's actually pretty cool how it turns out. So, while you're watching me dig out some uh, dirt, I'll just tell you about the project. So, essentially, I just, oh, like, I always had an idea, like, I'd really like to do something nice in the backyard and. And then this summer I wasn't traveling that much, so I, I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll get started on it. And like when I when I started this, I had like two months or a month and a half until classes began, so I thought I'd have plenty of time to get get this done before my classes started. So I was like, perfect, let's just get started. So everything you'll see throughout this video, you know, it's unplanned. Um, I sort of just went with it and and just problem solved as like problems or weird situations of, uh, like a row so I mean I just kinda went with it and figured out how to get get it done so yeah just right now I I later in the video you'll see that I'm putting up a gazebo but right now I'm just I uh sorta like spray painted out the outline how of how I want the cement pad so I'm just digging to it right now. And like I said, everything's unplanned, so I'm just going with it as I as I go. So So just continuing to dig out dirt. And overall I dug out about like six, seven yards of dirt, so it was not, it was not that much dirt. So what you didn't see is like obviously me dig out and me frame everything up and uh, so there's sand below, and on top of sand, I put about an inch of gravel, and right there, you see, I don't know, like seven or eight bags of gravel. I'm just yet again just trying to even out the gravel everywhere so it's a smooth surface, and then yeah, but okay, I look good on a concrete buggy, just saying, but. So yeah, I put about an inch of gravel, and then on top of the gravel, I laid steel mesh everywhere. There's not a square foot of of area on this pad that won't have steel mesh. There's steel mesh everywhere. I know it's kind of hard to see. You could kind of make it out, but yeah, I put it everywhere. So my dad, my dad and brother came up, and um, one of our uh, friends, Mr. Vushai, he's he he used to do concrete. He's really good at it. And he came up on an early morning Saturday to help us out. So the funny story about this is, this is Saturday morning. I flew in from San Diego and I got into, I got back home at like 2 a.m. So I had to wake up at 6, go get the concrete buggy. But like it was Friday morning in San Diego and I was calling into Michigan to get the concrete order set up and and get the machine on hold for me. So it was just it was it was a big stressful situation. So like obviously like right now I'm on like four hours of sleep. Woke up early, went to the the equipment rental, rented the bug. He came home and like, met up with the concrete guy, and it was just a hassle. But yet again, it all got done. So it was, I'm glad. But once they left, I I fell right asleep after this. I mean I was just simply exhausted. So right now. I, for this, I used a six bag, 4800 psi cement that's all steel reinforced, and then I just put a broom finish on it. So right now, I'm just I sweeped it all out, and I'm bringing out the legs for the gazebo. So this is a real wood gazebo. It's the Yardistry 12 foot by 14 foot gazebo they had at. Costco. I mean, they were just a huge sellout. And that's this is the one I got right here. So I got it at the Commerce Michigan Costco, uh, Costco, and I had to drive it all the way up to the East Lansing, where I where I live in East Lansing, because uh, there's just no Costco around us. And but yeah, so it was just it was really funny driving with all the stuff hanging off the back of the truck, but. So right now I'm just putting up the, the legs of the gazebo.
Right now, I'm just making sure everything's level. So as you can see, there, the, I made the pad slightly bigger than the gazebo. I didn't want it just being right at the edge. I really wanted to make sure it was nice and sturdy in there. So right now, just here's me and my dad just putting in all the arms and supports for the whole gazebo. Yep, just again, we keep rechecking and checking and making sure everything's level and square. You know, we really want it to look good and and. Uh, if it's like out of level, I would always notice and I would never been able to unsee it. So I had to make sure it was all good. So right now I'm just putting in all the bolts and nuts and bolts and nuts into it. So this is like one of the more difficult parts of this whole build was like this day. Just putting up the putting up the gazebo. I had just worked out arms and shoulders the night before and I was just so sore. And just holding that over your head for prolonged periods of time was just miserable. So, But right now we're putting in the roof. Get in the last piece of the roof in for the gazebo. Just gonna finish this up. Putting all the nuts and bolts in, making sure it's all nice and tight and strong. So, right here, I'm drilling in um, half inch holes into the cement pad for a half inch steel re steel rebar so I'm about to lay down some bricks into a nice almost like outdoor kitchen type thing so just mixing up some mortar put in and making sure the bricks level and I'm squaring off the brick to the pad you'll never see me use a square but I square all the blocks to the pad so just doing the other side right now so I can pull a string in just pulling a string right there I know it's hard to see, but I do pull a string all the time. So right there, I'm just starting to do the first layer. So just mixing up some mortar and continuing. I know you don't see me using a square. Like you see me pulling a string to make sure the back wall is flat, but you don't see me pulling a square. I, the total width of this was like uh, 109 inches. And like the biggest difference from the front and the back was only by, it was a little less than a quarter of an inch, which is perfect. And it's just, it's perfectly square in my eyes you know I don't need any more square than that because you'll see later on that I do more stuff to this but yet again just continuing laying some blocks down and yet again as I go block by block I make sure each and every every block is level to the one next and right of it and that it's level in every direction I forgot how many bags of mortar I had to mix for this. It was a lot. But, I mean, you can see that my shirt that I'm just starting to sweat through completely, and it just gets worse and worse through the video. So 
So right there, you see me with the sledgehammer. I'm just breaking and I'm breaking in some of the joints because I'm gonna put steel rebar, steel rebar across the whole thing everywhere to make sure it's all super strong and sturdy and and every other block I'm gonna fill with cement everywhere as well. I, every block that has steel in it's gonna be filled with cement, but all the other ones, every other one will also just to make sure it's extremely sturdy and it'll never really go anywhere. So just continuing, you can see my pup in there, that little troublemaker. He's just, he's approving everything, making sure everything's up to his standard. But I think in this video you can see that I am, yes, in fact, I am pulling a string everywhere. I, I, I know people are going to doubt it, but I do pull a string every time, making sure it's all flat and level. Now I'm just bringing out the steel rebar that I'm going to put across everywhere. So all the third layer was always going to be steel everywhere, both vertically and horizontally to it to make sure that it's all nice and strong. I'm just Has anyone kept counting how many bags of the egg, of mortar I've used already? <laughs> it's a lot. Man, they got heavy after a while. Oh God. But so right now I'm just doing the fourth layer up. Just putting on the last block and. So the grill is assembled and I put it in. Now I'm doing an, another wall and um, I kind of made a mistake here. I should have tied this in better to the whole wall, but nevertheless, you'll see later on what I do. And on the third layer of this, I do use the um, the hammer drill to drill into the wall that I already put up. So I tie it in with steel rebar across there as well. And I, on this one, I'm gonna pour a cement pad in every hole in this and the blocks get filled with cement from the pad that I already poured all the way to the top but right now I'm just mixing in some mortar and I know you don't see it in there but I did put a horizontal steel rebar, re steel rebar that ties into the other block as well so just continuing here putting up some blocks and just doing another layer in there and this block ties it into the wall but Yet again, like I said, every hole in here is going to get filled with cement because I'm doing a whole pad on top. So right now I'm just framing up for the cement pad that I'm doing. Over here later on you'll see that I do a, a wood-fired pizza oven, but right now I'm pouring a cement pad in there. And so obviously right now I'm just framing it up.
So right now I'm just cutting all the steel rebar that sits on above it. So just through, so the cement mix I'm using right here is uh, two bags of of high strength quick right cement and one bag of gravel. I, so and you saw I just put a bunch of steel rebar steel rebar to reinforce and make sure it's really strong. Just mixing up some more cement. Throwing it on. Like I said, every block's filled all the way up, so the cement's not going to go anywhere. Just there. So just flatten it out with this wood real quick. Make sure it's level everywhere. And then right now, I just start to. Obviously, right now, I start to float it, make sure it's flat everywhere. and smooth and I think you can see pretty well from the video that it is really nice and smooth so this is one of the most challenging parts of this whole build was doing this granite mosaic floor so I used inch and a quarter granite pieces so we I took a bunch of sink cutouts and scrap pieces of granite that we had and just essentially hit them with a the hammer broke them in and just fit them everywhere how they fit and right now you're just seeing uh that I start thin setting them in and this is just such a difficult part because like I initially start by trying to do it a row at a time but then they never went back the way like you initially put in and like the joint started looking bad so I had to go back to doing a piece by piece and there's just a ton of pieces and I'm using like the verse versa bond like flexible thin set or whatever I, for, I forget but it took about 400 pounds of thin set to do the whole floor so it took a lot of material just to just to thin set it in and then I forgot how many pounds of grout it took but so right now you just see I'm continuing to thin set piece by piece Yeah, another day just mixing it up more thin set. It was sometimes like as I did this whole thing, like a lot of times I, I miss the piece, and the next day when you're walking, like I notice because I'd move and I have to go mix some up and then set that in nicely. And oh god, this was, I th I honestly think this was probably the most challenging part of the whole build, or this whole patio project was doing this mosaic floor because like it's, it's all inch and inch and a quarter granite, and like I broke the pieces with the hammer so those. The edges were ridiculously sharp, and I just, I mean, I lacerated my hand everywhere. Right now, I'm just framing out in front of the grill. So I'm tap conning, tap con screwing in this treated wood into the cement or cinder blocks. So I'm just drilling it or screwing them together. And the vertical ones you see were tap conned into the cinder blocks. So that uh the propane hose is in the way so I had to go cut a little notch in. And now I'm gonna put one more vertical support in. So that ties the ground up so there's more vertical support. And now I'm just putting in some half inch uh cement board everywhere. I didn't want to put cinder blocks because I would have sat too far forward of the grill and just looked bad. So I was like, I'll go cement board. You know, cement board is really good for exterior use. And, and you'll see later on that I tile over it. So, But yet again, just right back to 
then setting it in and this was a, a really late night thing right here because there's just so many pieces to do and you, like I said you have to do them one by one yeah there's uh, over the course of this whole project there's a lot of late nights like even trying to use my phone light to just shine a little light and trying to be respectful to the neighbors and everything. So right here I start grounding it in. For grout I'm using a um, quick right mortar. The same stuff I used to mortar the cinder blocks in. So I'm mixing it in the little whatever little bucket thing. Same one I mix all the cement and every other thing else when. And I'm using the trowel to spread it then I go over with the grouting tool, the squeegee type tool. So like really push it in there nicely, make sure that's like all solid in there, that it's all flat. So, yep, just had to go get more. And I think I took like 500 pounds of this or some ridiculous amount of grout. But yet again, just going over, filling all the gaps with it nicely. Then going over with the squeegee tool, smoothing it out. Then going over with the wet sponge to kind of like wash it out. just mixing more and more up man those 80 pound bags just started getting so heavy moving so many of them and this and this mortar should work really well because all the edges of the granite is rough so it should stick extremely well so right here I'm using uh, brick pavers since the these are a different elevation I want a nice curves and that's what I'm doing here and you can see those big wood 8 by 8s that I had to pull out by hand those weigh like 400 pounds and I'm using um exterior liquid nail to glue each of the bricks together so it forms a really solid solid wall right there I've done this before and it's a really effective way of doing it and right now I'm um, just cutting a door for an uh, cutting a hole for an access door into the cement board and that's a silver stainless steel access door right there so right here this is two inches of calcium silicate board that I'm doing a uh, 36 inch circle on top just to lay it out roughly and right now I've since calcium silicate board is extremely porous I put aluminum foil on top of it just so it doesn't absorb the water out too quickly so right now I'm just mixing in some castable refractory cement. This stuff's good to like 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is going to be really good. Just putting a thin layer. Then I'm starting to put in um, putting in uh, the fire bricks in there. So I use, I, I wouldn't be able to say exactly what's in the fire bricks. But I know these are good to like 1400 degrees Celsius as well. So... The pizza oven's only going to be working at about a thousand degrees, so I'm everything I use is rated well above where I'm actually going to be by almost like by a factor of two. So yeah, so I got this castable refractory cement off of Amazon. I ordered a bunch of buckets of it. It was the cheapest spot and it was all prime, so I got it really quick. So yeah, again, as I'm going brick by brick, I'm making sure it's really it's perfectly flat everywhere. And I'm really making sure all the joints are ridiculously small. So you're seeing I'm not putting any cement between the bricks. That's because I want ash to fill it all in there. Because I'm making it as tight as I can. And whatever little gap is there, ash will just fill it in. So, so right now I'm just mixing up more cement and getting the bricks ready. All these bricks are, I'm pulling them out of a wheelbarrow that's full of water that they're soaking in. So I'm just doing the access door or the door of the pizza oven right now. So this was taking forever so I ended up switching to pictures. So this is some pictures of the build. You can see tight joints everywhere. And here's the little archway I'm doing right now. This is 63% the, the height of this is 63% smaller than the diameter of it so right now I'm framing out a little chimney so that's what I'm doing right now filling in the hole right there with styrofoam 
I took thin plexiglass, heated up, and bent it around. And right, so this whole video is in chronological order. So after I did that, the next morning I drove home, and this is me and my dad fabricating all the granite pieces for everywhere. So I'm just using this bridge saw to cut all these pieces to size. Um, So, just as always, every time I work with my dad, I'm doing my stuff. So I'm here cutting on the bridge saw. He's over there. He's over there polishing and prepping, doing all the final touches. And and this way, no one's really standing around still. And and we um we move quickly. So everything here, everything, all the granite pieces that were cut here was cut, polished, and everything in let in like an hour, hour and like twenty minutes, I think. There's a lot of pieces, so I mean this is pretty fast for all the p all the little pieces we have to do. And right here, I'm doing like the landing or whatever it's called in front of the pizza oven, the little the little smooth curve. And so this one has to be really intricate, and I had to make sure that these were precise, precise cuts. So because I really want a nice tight fit, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm cutting, and my dad's back there polishing, so I'm just cutting it. Then I'll take it over to my dad, and he's polishing right there. And then you see me uh, right now. I'm waxing all the pieces everywhere he polishes. I go back and wax over them, and then I go with the blowtorch to really cure the wax nicely. Then I take steel wool to polish it off nicely, and it, it gives a beautiful sheen. So the top of the counters match really nicely with the edge, and and that's so. Like I said, he does his stuff. I do my stuff. And no one's really standing around. We're both maximizing our efforts to finish this really quickly. So, so I'm just fabbing right now. So right now, the next day I was I was home, and so I'm just starting to do some stack stone tile. I'm just then setting it in. I know those that bottom of the corner looks a little different color. It's just that the stack stone has um some weird dust on it. Later in the video I think you see that it all it's all the same color. I know it looks different, but it's really not. So doing that, just doing it everywhere. It's a lot of work when you're doing you're mixing all the thin set, you're cutting all the pieces all alone, but it's not that big of a deal. I managed to get it done. <laughs> so just finishing it up. Really trying to minimize the amount of cuts. I don't want to waste any pieces. So that uh the chimney frame you guys saw me make, I'm filling it in right now with a, a refractory cement perlite and sand mixture. So I'm just filling it in nicely. And and later and you'll see that I use a six inch stainless steel. The top of it right now is a six inch stainless steel. I forget what those are called, but so right here I'm putting in I think it's it's either inch and a half or two inch insulation blanket. Um this is ceramic fiber insulation blanket yet again. This is good to like fourteen hundred degrees Celsius, so I'm just uh, just putting on a layer. I forgot what the thickness, is, whatever. I forgot the thickness, is, but I'm putting a layer of this on, and then I'll go over with chicken wire, and this is gonna make sure that it squeezes that really tightly to the whole frame, to the whole pizza oven. And yet again, you see this stuff's horrible to work with, so I'm wearing a mask and gloves and safety glasses. I don't want to get this anywhere in me or on me, so. And here's just a picture of it. And right now, yet again, I'm using that same refractory cement perlite sand mixture to put a rough layer on right now. This I'm going to put up multiple layers on. So right now I'm just doing a rough layer. And then I'll go back and, and, and later on you'll see that I'll start floating this to try to smooth it out. So, 
using that same mixture of refractory cement, perlite, and sand. I'm and uh, so I'm I'm bringing up that cement pad since this is closer to fire. I wanted this to be high heat. So this sense. So I'm bringing this up where I'm going to put that granite piece in. This is just pure refractory cement. And that's that piece me and my dad fabricated. As you can see, it's a beautiful tight fit. Now I made sure it's all level everywhere and everything. It looks great. And it's perfectly smooth going into the pizza oven. Here's one of the first fires I did into it to start curing it. And right now I'm just starting to cut around some of the pieces of tile. So the, the grand pieces we fabricated, they'll fit in nicely, as you can see right there. And that stainless steel access door you guys saw earlier, I spray painted it black with uh, a rust-preventing enamel paint so it matches everything black. Then I tap conned it in into the cinder blocks. And right now I'm just starting to frame out for an archway below the pizza oven where the wood's going to go. So my brother's doing some final polishing on it everywhere, making sure it's all smooth anywhere that's been cut, that it's all polished. And then right there I just did an archway and in half inch cement board again. And so just now right now we're, so my, my dad and brother came up because this was the weekend before my classes started. So they came up so I could make sure that we get most of this done, so I'm done before classes start. So you're going to see a lot of progress happening right now because there's three of us working on it. I'm then sending it in. My brother's back buttering the tile, and he's just slapping it on. So I'm putting something set down on the cinder blocks, and, he, and he's back buttering it and just slapping it on. So this way we can, yet again, as always, maximize everyone's efforts. No waste of time and we get this done. And we get all of this done, all this tiling done in, in like three hours, cutting everything and so this is pretty quick, all three of us working together. So yeah yeah, I'm just tiling this in. And right now I'm just layering, putting down some silicone for the one of the granite pieces I fabricated with my dad. Just and again tiling more and more everywhere. So So just framing up right now because that little curved archway I've done over there I'm going to tile there and on the side of the grill pizza oven we do put tile in there fill it all in. So right now I'm just putting in single pieces making sure it looks and, and it's an actual curve. I'm thin setting. I put some thin set down then back buttered every piece and just slapped them in. So the, the even though that's all flat pieces of tile the curve looks really nicely just below the granite piece right there. So I'm just tiling in piece by piece. So
So that archway I s you saw me make, we fabricated a granite piece in and we're going to silicone it in. So it looks nice and I think it, that came out great. Right now I'm putting down two layers of weed preventer, weed, weed berry or whatever, putting the plot, pots in and then we just got a bunch of bags of stone from Home Depot and we're just putting it in. So putting some water on and just now I'm putting that same thinner layer of refractory cement in. I, I found out that I actually put such a thick layer the first time it was about an inch and a half thick that I went I basically went over here and wherever there was like really rough splashy spots I filled them in nicely in this new cement and um and I'll just go back over with the sponge a wet sponge to mix them in nicely and because I, yeah, I would have been just overkill putting more in. So here's some plants. The local nursery, we have a really good nursery right by where I live. And I went there and I told them my specific situation. And they found me the perfect plants for them. So these plants will grow slightly taller. They're going to cover up the meter. And they're going to do really well in a, in a pot. So right now I just put some uh, fireplace silicone down to hold the chimney in. And right now I'm putting it on a Rust-Oleum high temperature enamel paint. So this one's, it's like really thick, thick enamel paint that's going to make this whole pizza oven waterproof. Because, you know, the refractory cement perlite mixture I put in is slightly porous and I don't want that getting into the ceramic fiber, ceramic fiber blanket. So I just put, I'm doing a thick layer of, of this paint over it to make it all nice and watertight. So right now I'm just uh, putting on some of the string lights. It's a uh, 50 foot of hanging like Edison bulb type lights. I'm doing nice all around the perimeter of the gazebo. Now I'm just putting all the old Edison style bulbs and these bulbs look awesome. Now I'm starting to bring out some of the patio furniture I got. Miss the grass. Let's go back. Where's the sledgehammer? So I really want to give a special, a few special thanks to people that contributed to this build. One of them is my buddy, uh, my buddy Chris. After you saw, you saw me stop digging and you go where I'm framing out the final. He was part of everything in between. He helped me dig out the rest. He helped me spread a lot of the gravel and helped me um, frame out the rest. And that was a huge help. You know, he took time out of his day, drove up here to help me out. So I really appreciate that help. I really appreciate the help of, obviously, you know, my dad. You saw him in a lot of parts of the video and my brother, you know. But there's also a lot of times where you didn't see him, you know. You really didn't see him when they helped me load up the car with a bunch of granite. And, and where, we're, where they had to load up their car with a bunch of tile and bring it up here and unload all that tile, you know. So, you know, they, they've devoted a lot of time to this as well. Obviously, you know. 
Mr. Vushai, the guy you saw who was doing the concrete, you know, he had to wake up at like 5 in the morning on a Saturday, get ready to drive an hour up to where I live and help me do the cement work. So that was really, really, really nice of him. And then obviously, it's, you know, it's very special thanks to Morgan. She took a lot of time out of her day to, you know, watch my dog and, she, uh, you know, she did the pattern for the mosaic floor and I just thought she did a really good job on that. So I just really want to give a special thanks to everyone who helped contributed to this build.